That is actually my shoe store presently. This is. This yeah, it's a quinceanera shop. We all keep mementos, some big, some small. Reminders of our achievements, souvenirs of journeys. John Brewer's mementos are his past and ours. You see, he played a part in one of our country's worst days. The president's car is now turning onto Elm Street, and it will be only a matter of minutes before he arrives at the trademark. All of a sudden you hear a reporter come in, and shots have been fired, and uh, then you start paying attention. The president of the United States is dead. It's been 50 years since Mr. Brewer listened to that gut-wrenching news on his transistor radio. And just uh, within a few moments, another report that an officer, officer had been shot here in Oak Cliff. This is a 22-year-old Johnny Brewer, as he called himself then, a shoe store manager just transferred from Austin to Oak Cliff. He was standing right about where those tennis shoes are right there, just uh, about five feet from the door there. The man Johnny was describing matched the description of someone who had just shot Oak Cliff police officer J.D. Tippett blocks away. The officer was shot about two miles from the scene of the presidential assassination. But it was the man's behavior that Mr. Brewer remembers still today. But mostly it was his action as to trying to avoid what everybody else was trying to see. The man standing outside the shoe store on November 22nd, 1963, was Lee Harvey Oswald. It had been about an hour since President Kennedy was assassinated. And he looked in briefly, I looked at him, and then as soon as the police cars all went by, he looked over his shoulder and turned and walked out back onto the sidewalk on Jefferson toward the Texas Theater. I just saw him walk in. I said, something's not right here. He told the woman at the ticket booth to call police, then went inside to look around. And I wonder what in the hell am I doing, you know? Seriously, uh, am, I, am I carrying this too far? You know, what? Did I really see that? And in just a few moments, I mean, this was quick. Uh, the house lights came on. The movie was still playing. I looked up between the curtain. And I saw him, you know, just sitting there just a couple of rows from the back uh, in five or six seats. And then I heard this noise outside and I opened the door and the police grabbed me and asked me what I was doing there and I told them. And they asked me if the man was still in theater. I said yes. Police reenacted what happened next. With Johnny standing just feet away, Oswald pulled a gun, but was overpowered and arrested. The entire scenario lasted only minutes, but reliving it has lasted a lifetime for this soon-to-be 72-year-old. I think of, of course, every day just walking through a living room when I've got, you know, so much memorabilia from it. Yeah, it's inside the theater. Mr. Brewer moved back to Austin in the 1970s, raised a family, and worked in the appliance business. Through the years, he has talked about the day a little, done a few interviews, even consulted for movies. Uh, that's the fellow that played me, uh, Don McCoy. But mostly, he's lived his life away from the spotlight. You know, it, it, it was a part of my life, for sure. But it didn't define it.